Good afternoon again to all of you. We are ready to begin our commencement ceremony. Please silence your electronic devices and stand if you are able for our processional. It's a spectacular day for a celebration. Uh, we're grateful uh, for all these graduates and grateful for this day of celebration and we're grateful that all of you could be here with us to join in the celebration. We'd like to begin with our invocation to be led by Sarah Gerwig Moore, Professor of Law. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of the universe, you have been with us through our worry. Be with us now in our relief. 
You have been with us through the loneliness of the past years. Be with us now in a celebration of our community. You've been with us through our fear. Be with us now in our joy. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God of grace and strength. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of the more than 9,000 students of Mercer University scattered among 12 schools and colleges, the more than 1,500 faculty and staff, more than 80,000 alums, and the Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to welcome you to the commencement for Mercer University's Walter F. George School of Law. Established in 1873, our School of Law is one of the oldest schools in the South and a source of great pride for our graduates as well as the university. Today is a defining event in the life of each student who is graduating. All of these students have crossed new thresholds of understanding and experience, explored new intellectual terrain, and envisioned new prospects for their lives and careers. This event is a tribute to all of you who have family and friends graduating today. Your resolve, your patience, and your encouragement have enabled them to make this journey. So in addition to the gratitude of the graduates, I want to convey the university's gratitude to you for your persistent support. I would also remind us all that the profession of law is a high calling. It requires that we combine the abilities of mind with the habits of character. This high calling warrants our respect and yours. Let graduation hearten us to the value of the power of reason, to act with principal judgment and respect, and relate to one another with compassion and integrity. Kathy Cox, who serves as dean of the School of Law, will now bring greetings from the school. Good morning. It is also my pleasure to welcome you to this exciting occasion in the life of Mercer Law School, our 2021 commencement. Graduates, you are a significant part of Mercer Law School's 148 year history, and your class has certainly made history as the very first class to com complete a full one half of your legal education in a pandemic and in virtual and hybrid forms of instruction. Now you are about to become only the second group of lawyers in Georgia and other parts of the country to earn your license to practice law through an online bar examination. So you have definitely earned a place in the history books. I think you deserve some applause for that. And honestly, I hope no other class ever has to repeat it. We are grateful that you chose Mercer and invested so much of your life with us over these past three years. I hope you are reflecting today on all that you have accomplished and recognizing that while it was hard, really hard at times, you did it. You have proven to yourselves and to others that you can take on difficult tasks, put in the effort to meet those challenges, and succeed. You've earned a Juris Doctorate degree, something that less than one half of 1% of people in the United States achieve. You are all different people today, hopefully better, stronger, smarter, more ethically grounded and professionally focused individuals because of your three years here at Mercer Law School. We, the faculty and staff, are certainly better for having shared these years with you. 
You've earned this day the old-fashioned way, as they say, by working hard to get here. There were no shortcuts, as we told you in your first year. So to you all, congratulations and thank you. I'd like to recognize those who share the stage with me today, if you would hold your applause until I introduce them all. To your left, our student bar president, Stephen Portishev, Professor of Law, Sarah Gerwig-Moore, who offered our invocation and who served for most of your enrollment as your Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Assistant Dean of Students, Alyssa LaFall, and on the right side of the podium, President Underwood, our commencement speaker, Judge Yvette Miller, who will be more formally introduced in a few moments, and Mercer University Provost, Dr. Scott Davis. Let's thank our program participants. Graduates, as you know, there are many people who have contributed to your success and supported you on this journey. So I'd like to ask all the parents, grandparents, spouses, partners, and family members of our graduates to stand and let us offer you well-deserved thanks from your graduates. This is a day of celebration for everybody. The Mercer Law School faculty and staff have challenged our graduates with invaluable learning opportunities that prepared them for today. Their dedicated teaching and wise counsel have guided your learning and your professional development both in and out of the classroom. So I'd like to ask our faculty and staff to also please stand and accept our thanks for your commitment to the success of our graduates. Faculty and staff. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Graduates, I hope that you will say thank you many, many times today. You've earned this JD, but a lot of people helped and supported you along this journey. I hope you will continue to express your gratitude to all of these people today and to many others who will help you as you go along your career paths in the years to come. So now, let's get on with our great day of celebration. It's my pleasure now to introduce our commencement speaker. Back in 2009, our Mercer Lawyer magazine had a cover story entitled Shattered Ceilings. It was a feature story about today's commencement speaker, the honor Honorable Yvette Miller, who had just shattered one more ceiling in her historic career by becoming the first African American Chief Judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. As that article so appropriately described, and I will quote from it, Judge Miller's life journey began with a little girl to, born to an extraordinary family in a racially divided South where proverbial glass ceilings upheld by segregation laws restricted the opportunities of African Americans and little girls like Judge Miller. But against the odds, she persevered and even became a trailblazer, opening doors through which others now walk." End quote. That's how the journey of Judge Miller began, right here in Macon, Georgia. To know the warm, friendly, outgoing, funny woman that so many people know as Yvette Miller, few would appreciate the relentless determination that helped her maneuver through the challenges of becoming the first black student in her Macon Middle School, where her mother was the first and only black teacher. Her strong, focused parents helped her prioritize her education all the way to Mercer University, where as an undergraduate, her overwhelmingly white classmates elected her as the first African-American woman freshman class president. Four years later, they elected her again as the first African-American woman senior class president. During her second year as a Mercer Law student, 
she was crowned Miss Macon, becoming the first African American to hold that title. She continued to break through barriers and shatter glass ceilings, becoming the first in a series of positions in her legal career. One of the first female trial prosecutors in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, the general counsel and part owner of the first minority-owned car dealership in Southeast Georgia, the first female attorney to practice in the Brunswick Judicial Circuit, the first woman and first African-American to serve as director and judge of the appellate division of the State Board of Workers' Compensation. The list goes on and on, as you can read in your program today. But shattering glass ceilings is an exercise in futility if the process does not break ground for others to follow. And Judge Miller has always seen that as part of her responsibility. One sitting Superior Court judge in DeKalb County told me that Judge Miller has been there to open every significant door in this judge's professional life. Quoting Judge Shandina Morris, she said of Judge Miller, she is a mixture of grace, compassion, mercy, keen intellect, and a great sense of humor. She can meet a Fortune 500 executive or the man who works at the gas station, and she will treat them both the same way. There is no air of arrogance in her. She is just amazing. We at Mercer Law School have also been witness to this compassionate side of Judge Miller, who is always focused on helping others get ahead. She comes running to speak to our students on panels and programs whenever we have asked her for help. Two years ago, she contacted us to establish and endow a scholarship which now helps a Mercer Law student get through law school. I honestly never run into her when she doesn't say, now tell me, how are the students doing down at the law school? You know, sometimes commencement speakers are chosen because of their fame or celebrity, but they really don't have a connection to the law school. This year, we are fortunate to have, as our speaker, the total package, a renowned jurist who has reached the highest levels of legal accomplishment and service, but one who also knows and cares deeply about us, about Mercer Law School and its students. And she puts that concern into action, into tangible action, every year. So please join me now in welcoming back to Mercer Law School a speaker whose life and actions have truly shattered ceilings while paving the way forward for so many others, the Honorable Yvette Miller. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning to President Underwood, to Provost Davis, to Dean Cox, distinguished faculty and friends, and most importantly, the graduating Mercer Law School class of 2021. Good morning. Thank you, Dean Cox, for that lovely and wonderful introduction. You just warm my heart, thank you. Thank you so much. You honor me today with this invitation to serve as a commencement speaker, not just anywhere, but at my alma mater. This is, this is in, indeed a wonderful opportunity. It is a privilege and a pleasure to be here Class of 2021, this day is truly an occasion to celebrate your success. Today, your graduation is a culmination of your hard work, your diligence, your resourcefulness, and many answered prayers. I want to commend you for successfully completing your legal education in our current global climate. In the midst of it all, you have stayed the course you have been true to your agenda of completing your law school curriculum. You kept your eyes on the prize, and it has paid off for you. You made it, graduation day. So today we salute you, the
the Mercer University Law School graduating class of 2021, and we celebrate your success. Please join me in saluting the class with a round of applause. But what you have accomplished here today could not have been accomplished without the support of your family and friends who have stood by you and encouraged you on your journey. When I graduated from law school, if I can take a detour for a moment, my mother, my father, my grandparents were all here, here at that ceremony beaming with pride. Today, I see way up at the top that my mother is certainly still alive and is well. My dear brother, Dr. Conrad Miller Jr. and his lovely wife, Stephanie, are here to support me. My father, however, is no longer here. My father did not live to see me take the oath of office to become the 65th judge on the Georgia Court of Appeals, but I know he was there in spirit. My mother's physical presence gave me strength on that day as she held the Bible for me to bear witness as I was sworn in on that special day. And yes, also in 2009, my family and all of my colleagues on the court were at the Georgia State Capitol when I was sworn in as the first African-American chief judge. But I have to tell you this morning that I would not be all that I am, nor would I have accomplished all that I have accomplished up until this point without three things. Number one, God. Number two, my parents, my mother and my father. And number three, this outstanding university, one of the best law schools in the nation, Mercer University Law School has contributed greatly to my success. Thank you. So truly, I understand the importance of having family and friends to support you. So I would now like to pause and ask for a warm round of applause and appreciation for the family and friends who have supported and encouraged you on your law school journey. I would also like to congratulate the dean of the law school who has done a tremendous job of leading the law school with vision. I would also like to commend the president, the faculty, and the staff for ensuring that all of you made it through the law school curriculum, whether it was in person or virtually, in spite of this pandemic. So let's give the dean, the president of the university, the faculty, and the staff a round of applause for their tireless efforts during this pandemic year. Again, in this past year, we have seen so much rapid change. We've seen deaths, social unrest, extreme uncertainty. You have been faced with this pandemic, and that has changed life as we all know it. Everyone who is alive today is rethinking or should be rethinking their priorities and their next moves. Life is truly no longer business as usual. So I want to just take a few moments to encourage you in a way that I am always encouraged. The Bible says in John 16:33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In Psalms 27, the first chapter, the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? So be encouraged today. No matter what the current state of our nation may be, you are well equipped and well able to tackle all of the problems, the challenges, and the situations that we face in this country. Do not be afraid, only believe, and stay encouraged. As you go forth from law school, I want to remind you of the importance of the degree that you are obtaining today, especially the role and the function the Juris Doctorate degree plays in our society. We are a nation of rules and laws. The Juris Doctorate wields a lot of power. It has the ability to directly influence the rules and laws that we abide by and strive to live up to every day in society. That power, however, must be used responsibly and ethically. Your Juris Doctorate degree is a powerful tool that can be used to address many of the issues that are facing our nation. So each of you should ask yourself this very important question. What will I do with my law school degree? Maybe some of you will respond by saying, I'm going to get a great job in private practice. I'm going into big law. I'm going to work for the government. I'm going to work for a business. I'm going to clerk for a judge. Well, just to be clear, there is nothing wrong with any of these choices. But I want to remind you that as a lawyer and a member of one of the greatest professions in the world, there are unique opportunities and responsibilities to foster justice and equality in this world. The legal profession should not be used as a means only to make lots of money and to have a flashy career. At the heart of the Juris Doctorate degree is public service. The privilege of having a JD requires you to give back in service to your community, to your nation, and to the world to support also and uphold the rule of law, to advocate for causes of those who cannot and who do not have the means to advocate for themselves, to leave this country and this world in a better condition than those who came before you and stand for what is right. You know, I was fortunate and blessed to be friends with the late Congressman John Lewis, who departed from us last year, last July as a matter of fact. I first met John when I was a young lawyer living in Atlanta and I volunteered to campaign for him for his first race for Congress for the 5th District of the City of Atlanta. That was back in 1986. He became my friend and mentor. He was someone I sought guidance from as a young lawyer wanting to make a difference in my community. It was John who famously said, if you see something that is not right, that is not fair, that is not just, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. He also famously said, never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. He also said, you cannot be afraid to speak up and speak out for what you believe in. You have to have courage, raw courage. But don't be surprised if you find yourself standing by yourself. Sometimes you might be placed into some very uncomfortable places and situations. But as my dear friend Congressman Lewis said, you must be bold, you must be brave and courageous and find a way to get in the way. So in tune with the admonishments of my dear friend, Congressman Lewis, to help leave this world in a better place for those coming after you, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about justice and courage. Justice means that you behave in a way that is fair equal and balanced 
toward everyone and that you simply treat everyone the way that you would want to be treated. Courage, on the other hand, means that you will stand for what is right. There will be times in your legal career that you will have to be the one to step up and stand for what's right. Should that time arise for any of you, I do pray that you will have the courage to stand even if you have to stand alone. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone to do the right thing. Now, I can remember many years ago, after the Supreme Court's decision in Brown versus the Board of Education, and after the voting rights bill had been passed by Congress, and after the public accommodations bill had been passed by Congress, my father at that time was an employee at Warner Robins Air Force Base, and he was employed in a white collar position as a civil engineer. Now, at that time, Warner Robins Air Force Base was the largest employer in middle Georgia. And at that time, the base was still segregated. All over the base, you could find colored and white only signs displayed delineating eating and restroom areas. African Americans were still limited in the types of positions that they could work and they were unable to apply for positions that were readily available to Caucasians. Now this is despite the fact that again, Congress had already passed the public accommodations and the voting rights laws. And the Supreme Court had already declared in Brown versus the board that separate but equal is not constitutional. Although I was only nine or 10 years old at the time, I vividly remember the hurt and the humiliation that my father felt. Even though my father was a college graduate and otherwise well qualified for various jobs and positions at the base, he was discriminated against and was locked out of many opportunities that other, others similarly situated would be qualified to receive. This was the type of injustice he faced daily. But my father was not afraid to be bold or to be brave. He was not afraid to get in the way and to stand for what was right. So my father enlisted the help of a friend of his who just happened to be the first African-American attorney in the city of Macon. And they collaborated and decided to bring a class action lawsuit against Warner Robins Air Force Base. They worked the case up and the day that the case was called to court, the case in fact settled on the courthouse steps. And you'll learn in a short period of time, the only cases that settle like that are the cases that are extremely strong with the evidence. The government at that time agreed to take down its colored and white only signs and it agreed to allow African Americans to compete and work in the same jobs that were offered to Caucasians and declared that African Americans once and for all could receive the, could receive the raises and the promotions that were in fact due. But you know, the tragedy of that day was that although it was a class action lawsuit that was composed of at least 50 plaintiffs, only two people showed up that day for court, my father and the attorney. And so when I asked my father why only two people showed up, he told me that the other plaintiffs were afraid. He said they were scared to show up and let their faces and their voices be seen and heard. They were concerned about the repercussions, not only for themselves, but for their families. And I asked my father, was he not concerned about the repercussions for his family? And my daddy told me something I have never forgotten. And that is that some things are worth standing up 
and fighting for, for regardless of the consequences. I took those lessons to heart that I learned from my parents and I've applied them to my life to lead me and guide me and when necessary to be a source of encouragement and inspiration. After this experience transpired, I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer so that I could fight for justice against all types of injustices and to make a difference in this world. So how does any of this apply to you and your lives at this point in time? Well, as the saying goes, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Many of the issues that our parents and grandparents were fighting many years ago are still being fought today. Issues of racial inequality, economic inequality, police brutality, immigration reform, voting rights reform, and other issues are still being addressed in today's society. But I'm encouraged because lawyers are leaders, and I'm looking at a class of leaders, and lawyers are the healers of our society. So when you are called upon, please do your duty. Figure out where you stand on these issues if you choose to take up any of these challenges, regardless as to whether you take up these issues. I want to leave you with just a few points before I take my seat and be reminded of these things as you go forth in this new chapter of your life. Point number one, be a person of integrity, of character, and conviction. In this profession, your reputation is all that you have. Hold fast to your morals, your values, your principles, and continue to let them guide you. As new lawyers, you must rise every day to new challenges. You have to face those challenges with knowledge of the law, integrity, good character, and decisiveness, all while remaining humble. Please respect the truth. Do not tell lies and falsehoods. That is what it really means to be a person of integrity. Always speak the truth. Number two, be careful of social media. We live in a day and age where people are quick to post their lives and thoughts on various social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. But what people fail to realize is that once you post or tweet something, it cannot be taken back. And it is available for the world to see forever, including potential employers. The last position you want to be in is to find yourself locked out of a dream job or a dream position because you posted or tweeted something long ago. Point number three, and there are only five points. <laughs> Point number three, resist comparison. I know this is much easier said than done, it's, contempt, it's tempting to compare yourself to the student who's at the top of the class or your colleague whose salary is more than yours. And yes, in terms of social media, it's easy to look on LinkedIn and see that one of your peers received an offer from that great district attorney's office or got that prestigious clerkship. It's easy to feel like you are behind. One of the important keys of success is figuring out the path that you're on and that you're supposed to be on, frankly, and following that. Honor your own gifts. Do not work, do work that you find interesting and important and embrace your own journey. Please don't let comparison steal your joy. Number four, celebrate the small victories or what you might think of as a small victory. I can remember when I 
served as the chief judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. One of my initiatives as chief was to implement an electronic filing in the Court of Appeals. Now, technology was really just entering the judiciary in a very big way. This was back in 2009 and 10. But I faced a lot of pushback from some of my colleagues at the time who didn't necessarily feel like that was the most important thing that needed to happen. But nevertheless, I persisted and electronic filing was implemented on my watch. At the time, I thought, well, this is pretty good. It was a small accomplishment. From the outside looking in, one could easily ask, well, what's so important about the ability to electronically submit a filing at the Court of Appeals? Well, if you lived in North Georgia, in the North Georgia mountains or in South Georgia on the coast, you wouldn't need to drive to Atlanta or hire a courier to travel to Atlanta to file your appeal. So I thought that initiative was a great reason to celebrate because it helped improve access to the courts. And it also allowed people to submit their appeals to the court to have their issues uh, addressed. So today, while dealing with a pandemic that requires people to maintain social distance and uh, for people to work remotely, as in the employees at the Court of Appeals, because of our electro electronic filing initiative, which years subsequent to me has become even more refined and more advanced, our appellate courts have been able to continue functioning while respecting all of the CDC regulations. Now, this would not have been possible without my original electronic filing initiative. Just imagine what would have happened if you would not have been able to file your appeal or have your issue addressed for this past year and a half. So what might have seemed like a small accomplishment at the time upon reflection this past year ended up being a much bigger deal than I ever imagined because it helped keep the Court of Appeals moving and functioning in the midst of an unforeseen and unpredictable pandemic. So technology saved the day for our court system. And I'm sure for many of you, technology has saved the day because it has allowed you to complete your law school curriculum. And so I want to encourage you not to overlook what might appear to be initially a small victory and celebrate your accomplishments that actually make a difference in your lives and in the life and, and in your community. Number five, remember that life is a journey and I want you to remember that you have a long career ahead of you. As you sit here today, you may have already received an offer to work with your dream law firm or a public interest organization. Or you may not be sure of what your next step will be. Perhaps you just want to get a job so you can start repaying those student loans. I can understand that. But regardless of how you're starting your career, you don't have to have all the answers right now. In fact, you can't have all the answers in this moment. So I urge you instead to think about making the next best decision for your career and for your life. Don't let fear of failure defeat your opportunity to succeed. If you try a certain career path that actually does not agree with you, that's okay. Because you can dream a new dream. You can develop a new legal aspiration. There are parts of life's journey that you just won't see coming. Don't we all know that in light of this past year? What you've realized in the face of this pandemic, I know, is that number one, you're so resilient. You've discovered your true grit. You've discovered your tenacity, your ability to adapt even in the midst of a crisis. You've also discovered how to protect your mental health. You've learned new ways that technology is continuing to shape and mold our profession. So when the unexpected, hap when the unexpected happens, ask yourself, what can you take from this experience? What can you learn that will enable you to become a better attorney? As with all journeys, there may be roadblocks, 
you may hear no a couple of times, but that's okay. Stay tuned because when you get that one yes, that is all that you need to take your career to the next level. So as I close, I would like to encourage you that regardless of the path that you will take in your legal career, understand the significance of the degree that you obtained here today. Understand its power, understand the role that it plays in our society, and know that at the heart of this Juris Doctorate is public service. The requirement that you must do good and serve your community for the privilege of having this most powerful and worthy degree. Be a person of integrity. Let those principles guide you as you go forth. And please don't be afraid to stand up for what's right. I again say thank you for the opportunity to speak to you here today. I congratulate each of you. And before I take my seat, remember each other. Remember your classmates. Over the years as you go forth, please encourage each other. Remember that favorite professor, stay in contact. And yes, remember Mercer University School of Law. Give back to your university. I'm cheering you on, I'm praying for you. God bless and congratulations again, thank you. Thank you, Judge, for your words to our graduates. Uh, you've certainly honored us with your presence here today. Alyssa Lefall serves as Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, and she will now announce the recipients of student awards. Thank you, President Underwood, and thank you so much, Judge Miller, for that message. Good morning, or good afternoon at this point, right? Today is a joyous occasion, and I'm honored to celebrate your many achievements with you, your friends, and your families. As you enter your careers, you will realize that your education from Mercer Law School serves as the foundation, which gives you the voice and the power to do good, to speak for others when they cannot speak for themselves, and to effectuate change. I look forward to following the many contributions you are certain to offer, not only to your clients and colleagues, but also to the communities you will become a part of. On behalf of Dean Cox, Associate Dean Scott Titshaw, the faculty and the staff of Mercer University School of Law, I am proud to present several honors to members of the class of 2021. 10 members of this year's graduating class have been selected for membership into the Order of Barristers, a national honorary organization that recognizes excellence in trial advocacy and appellate practice. Members are to be commended for their exceptional service to the Mercer Advocacy Council and to the law school. As I call your name, will the newest members of Mercer Law's Order of Barristers chapter please rise. We ask that you hold your applause until everyone has been recognized. Brianna Fleming Dutch, Olivia Catherine Fletcher, Patrick David Hitt, Lauren Nicole James, Dantes M. Mars, Victoria Renee Neese, Emily Lillian Newberry, Jordan Lindsay Popkin, Maceline Elaine Williams, and Christopher Anthony Wood. Congratulations to each of you. The Brainerd Curry Honor Society is composed of students who have made valuable contributions to the intellectual fabric of the law school, have achieved academic excellence, have participated in law review or Mercer Advocacy Council, and other provided similar levels of service to the law school or legal community. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing as you accept our congratulations. Candidates for the Brainerd Curry Honor Society are Elizabeth Ann Crosswhite, Donna Ann Davis, Jameson M. Fisher, 
Lauren Nicole James, Emery Lee Larkin, Sarah Catherine Maley, Sarah Rose Most, Alex Elizabeth Mooring, Nicole Michelle Morrison, Rachel G. Ness Maddox, Summer Ortiz, Caitlin Marie Pelche, Robert Stephen Poitashev III, Benjamin W. Roth, Carrie Foster Sartain, Forrest F. Shrum IV, Brooke Nicole Stanley, Andrew George Wharton, and Christopher Anthony Wood. Congratulations to each of you. Finally, I have the pleasure of congratulating the members of the class of 2021 who have been inducted into membership of the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society. Phi Kappa Phi is a national honor society that recognizes and promotes academic excellence in all fields of higher education and engages its community of scholars in service to others. Would members of Phi Kappa Phi please stand as I call your name? Jameson M. Fisher, Lauren Nicole James, Emery Lee Larkin, Nicole Michelle Morrison, Summer Ortiz, Benjamin W. Roth, Carrie Foster Sartain, and Forrest F. Shrum IV. Congratulations. Names of the Order of the Barristers, Brainerd Curry Honor Society, and Phi Kappa Phi honorees can be found in your program along with a complete list of student awards that were presented earlier this week. I'm so very proud of everyone in the class of 2021, and I look forward to following your successes as Mercer Law School alumni. Congratulations. The Provost of the University serves as our Chief Academic Officer. At this time, I'd like to invite Provost Scott Davis to present the George Waldo Woodruff Award of Excellence. Thank you, President Underwood. It's my special privilege to present the 2021 George Waldo Woodruff Award of Excellence. The Woodruff Award was established to honor the memory of George W. Woodruff, a distinguished businessman, proponent of education, and a special friend of the law school. Mr. Woodruff's generosity made possible the purchase of the law school building in downtown Macon, and his bequest to the law school ensures its success for the future. The Woodruff Award is the most prestigious award a law student may receive and is given to the graduating student having the highest cumulative academic average for all three years of study. At this time, I ask Rachel Ness Maddox to come forward. I now present to you the Editor-in-Chief of the Mercer Law Review, Lauren Nicole James, who will present the Reynolds J. Kosick Excellence in Teaching Award.
Professor James P. Fleissner, please join me at the podium. Professor Fleissner, please accept this plaque on behalf of the Mercer Law Review in the class of 2021 in recognition of your distinguished career and legendary teaching. Thank you so much. Dean Cox will now present the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree. Will the candidates for the Juris Doctorate degree please rise? <laughs> President Underwood. President Underwood, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. These candidates have been recommended by the faculty of Mercer's School of Law, approved by the Board of Trustees, and I now request that you confer upon them the degree of Juris Doctor. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the Dean of the School of Law, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Mercer University, it is my great privilege to hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Juris Doctor. Congratulations to each of you. Members of the graduating class of 2021, on behalf of the faculty, the administration, and the trustees of the university, I congratulate you on the achievements that have brought you to this important hour of recognition and commencement. This day, by any measure, is a very good day. I want to remind you that the promise of learning neither began nor will it end with the law degree you have earned today. In fact, continuous learning is essential to the practice of law. So I urge you above all else to keep learning. Every day in all that you do, learn something new and you will find success as a lawyer. Members of the class of 2021, in the first sentence of the American Bar Association's model rules of professional conduct, your responsibilities as a lawyer are defined. It states that a member of the legal profession, you are to serve as a representative of clients, an officer of the legal system, and as a public citizen having special responsibility for the quality of justice. Those are serious and weighty responsibilities which you are well prepared to assume. I charge you now to go forth as graduates of Mercer Law School, ready and willing to pursue the highest standards of our profession in pursuit of justice as you serve as zealous advocates, wise counselors, strong legal writers, and compassionate leaders. I now invite your family, your professors, and friends to join me in saluting you one more time, the graduating class of 2021. Congratulations to you all. You may now be seated. 
It is now the time in our ceremony to recognize all of our graduates. It is now the time in our ceremony to recognize all of our graduates with the formal accoutrements of commencement. It is what we have all gathered here today to witness. Your son, your daughter, your spouse, your friend, walking across the stage to be hooded and then presented with their diploma or diploma cover. It is a joyous occasion, but one that calls for the proper respect and decorum that appropriately reflects the importance of this major milestone in the lives of these graduates. We want every graduate's name to be heard by their families and friends, and we want to assure that our graduates are honored in a setting truly befitting this significant and high occasion. So on behalf of these graduates and the university, I ask that you keep your celebratory outburst a little toned down, refrain from using any artificial noisemakers, and please hold your applause until each graduate's name is read. Due to social distancing guidelines and for everyone's safety, we are not able to offer a location on the floor for family members and guests to come down and take pictures. But our Mercer photographers are going to snap two pictures of every graduate, one as our graduates are hooded with our faculty hooders and another with President Underwood and myself. And those photographs will be made available to all of you. So now, President Underwood, if you will join me again at the podium. And I'm going to ask Stephen, Robert Stephen Portishev III, President of the Student Bar Association, who is graduating cum laude, to please come forward to be hooded. Congratulations, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen Portishev, as the student bar president for 2021, will now call the names of the graduates of Mercer University School of Law for the class of 2021. Thank you, Dean Cox. Assisting in the commencement ceremony as hooders selected by the class of 2021 are professors James P. Fleischner, Timothy W. Floyd, Michael D. Sabbath, and Karen J. Snedden. Will professors Timothy Floyd and Karen J. Snedden please come forward? Will the first row of graduates please rise? Will the marshal please escort the graduates into position? As I read your name, please come forward to take your picture. Nadia Ali Yala. Knox L. Allen. Nancy Ann Anderson. Kimberly Z. Andrews. Yeah. 
Young Wu An. Grace Ellen Marie Bell. Victoria Elise Bethel. Elizabeth Ann Boswell. S. Emily Botchen. Morgan Morris Bolano. Jordan Taylor Brown, cum laude. Sean B. Callahan, cum laude. Ryan Allen Carnes. Mary Jane Calm. <laughs> Emily Taryn Cook. Elizabeth Ann Crosswhite, magna cum laude. <laughs> Stephen Carson Cummings, Jr. Donna Ann Davis, cum laude. Sandra Davis, cum laude. Sarah Christina Diamond, cum laude. Kyle William Dobbins, cum laude.
Caitlin Michelle Dowdle, dual degree, Juris Doctor and Master of Business Administration. Mark Bender Dubuque. Jordan Alexander Dyke. Emerald Brooke Ezel. Jonathan Michael Finley. Zachary Davidson Findling. Letitia Na Abia Fishin. Jameson M. Fisher, magna cum laude. Brianna Fleming Dutch, cum laude. Olivia Catherine Fletcher. Sarah Jean Foster. Wayne Wright Gammon the third. <laughs> Madison Page Gann, cum laude. Catherine Victoria Gilland. Yeah. 
Gary Chester Graham III. Michelle T. Grant. <laughs> Brittany J. Griffith. Brittany Greiner. <laughs> Elena V. Gutseva. Savannah C. Hartley. Matthew Ian Herrera. Madeline Marie Hersom. Daniel Ian Higgins. William A. Hill, cum laude. <laughs> Benjamin J. Hillis. Patrick David Hitt. <laughs> Alexis May Lee Holton, cum laude. Victoria Ashley Hudson. <laughs> Lauren Nicole James, magna cum laude.
Aaron C. Johnson, dual degree, Juris Doctor and Master of Business Administration. Jury Sierra Joyner. Kareem Asim Cashlin. Katie Bird Kelly, cum laude. Pearson Kelly. Stephen Cotter. Thank you, Professor Floyd and Professor Snedden. Will Professors James P. James P. Fleischner and Michael D. Sabbath Please come forward to take your picture with the remainder of the class of 2021. Taylor Rose Lacey, cum laude. Davis Driver Lackey, cum laude. <laughs> Betty Michelle Lafontaine. Emery Lee Larkin, magna cum laude. Christina Nicole Ledna. Christina Elizabeth Ling. Sarah Catherine Maley, cum laude.
Dantes M. Mars. Sarah Rose Moust, magna cum laude. Connor L. McCloskey. Todd Landon McFarlane. Paige McKenzie Miller. Kimberly Megan Mims. Alex Elizabeth Mooring, cum laude. Nicole Michelle Morrison, magna cum laude. Hannah Christine Myers. <laughs> Alexandra H. Navarre. Victoria Renee Nice. Rachel G. Ness Maddox, magna cum laude. Peter O. Summer Ortiz, magna cum laude. Caitlin Marie Peltier, cum laude. Jordan Lindsay Popkin.
Gregory Keith Pridgen, Jr. Courtney Jean Quigg. Jonah Luke Reisman. Anthony Cameron Richardson. Benjamin W. Roth, magna cum laude. Dowlin Joe Riles. Forrest F. Shrum IV, magna cum laude. Sydney Elizabeth Seegers. Elizabeth Clara Self. Galina Semenenko. Shaylee Hamol Shaw. <laughs> Jalen Rashad Smith, dual degree, Juris Doctor and Master of Business Administration. Joanna K. Smith. <laughs> Lauren Ashley Smith. Antonio D. Solomon, cum laude. Spencer Grayson Summers. Brooke Nicole Stanley, magna cum laude.
Mylia A. X. Stokes. Raluca Andrada Sultana. Dakota Hunter Tankersley. Wes Taylor. Zachary Michael Taylor. Rebecca Golden Teal, cum laude. Mason Shelby Turner. Rachel Nicole Vale. Caroline Elizabeth Walker, cum laude. Danya Michelle Wana, cum laude. <laughs> Christopher Thomas Underwood Ware. Andrew George Wharton, cum laude. Maselyn Elaine Williams. Hannah Kelsey Woods. Andrew Yoon. Thank you, Professor Fleischner and Professor Sabbath. We have several graduates who have chosen to be joined by family members who are themselves graduates of Mercer Law School. I will announce the name of each of these graduates and, na and the name of the family member who will be with them. Jeffrey Bryce McCarter, accompanied by his brother, Justin Brady McCarter, class of 2019.
Emily Lillian Newberry, accompanied by her father, Mark Daniel Newberry, class of 1991. Caroline Gledhill Powell, accompanied by her brother-in-law, Keith Eric Fitzgerald, class of 2010, who is standing in on behalf of her late father, Julius Othell Powell, class of 1982. Carrie Foster Sartain, magna cum laude, accompanied by her mother, Lydia Jackson Sartain, class of 1984. Taylor Simone Wilson, accompanied by her aunt, Latoya Simone Bell Williams, class of 2012. Christopher Anthony Wood, cum laude, accompanied by his cousin, the Honorable Catherine L. Powers, class of 2009. Thank you all. Okay, I think uh, we need one final, final round of applause for the class of 2021. Congratulations to all of you. This has been a great day, a great celebration. I want to once again express our appreciation for all of you who could join us for this uh, tremendous celebration. At this time, would you rise for our benediction, which will be given by Professor Sarah Gerwick Moore. After the benediction, would you please remain in place until after the recessional? We thank you for joining us today for this special, special celebration. 
And I want to join everyone before me on the program in congratulating our newest group of law, Mercer Law School alumni. We do ask that you exit the building immediately after the benediction. The, gra the graduates are going to recess out of the intramural uh, court doors which lead to the Stetson Hatcher School of Business parking lot. Let us pray. The road that brought us here has been long indeed. May you stride forth joyfully into the sunshine of this day, surrounded by those who wish you success and love and every good thing. May you be blessed with opportunity and good fortune, as well as with a heart that breaks at cruelty and injustice. In moments of fear, may you be fortified with confidence, and in moments of celebration, recall your responsibility to others. May you be blessed with courage to uphold the rule of law, as well as with the courage to make good trouble when necessary. And may you seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly by faith into the, all the promise that lies ahead. Amen.